Amen? But now that she's seen the word works, and now her faith has to be in the word. Amen? So last week we were talking about stress. Amen? People dealing with stress. And this time of year, people get stressed out. The holidays stress people out. Can you say amen? They get stressed because they don't have money to buy a bunch of stuff. They get stressed trying to prepare meals, trying to get their house, trying to... They get stressed out dealing with relatives that they have issues with. <clears throat> Just all kinds of stress. And we look to how different ways stress comes through jobs, through school, through relatives, through people. Just many ways stress can come. And so we, we looked at and we start begin to look in some ways that the believer can overcome stress. And so we'll pick back up where we left off last week. And um, we, we finished off talking about becoming a believer. And don't, and don't worry, we was using Philippians 4, 8. Don't worry about anything, pray about everything, give thanks, meditate, trust God, and honor God's word. And we got hung up last week on becoming a believer. Amen. And now we know why. Thank God we had a young lady born again last Wednesday night. Can you say amen? All right. I forgot the announcements, didn't I? I got excited about the word. Friday night, ladies meeting. I don't know what time it is, but if you're a lady and you want to come, you'll find out what time. Just be here at 5 o'clock. I'm sure you'll be on time. Amen. Then the next Friday night, November 22nd, youth event, campground, United Methodist Church, we need workers. All right? We need workers. And so if you want to be a part of that, we're going to try to get together Wednesday before service. Uh, so there will be no choir practice because we want to get all of our ducks in a row regarding this event. Make sure we know who's doing what. And we're not going to find out the last minute something's not covered. All right. So that will be next Wednesday. Uh, we'll just try to be here around 445. And uh, we'll, we'll go from there. The event, 5 o'clock. If you plan on working, we're probably going to need you there by 4 o'clock. They said they would have us the doors open by 4. And so uh, get there, get set up, and uh, get ready to receive these young people. Go to Facebook, share, share the uh, video, share the, the flyer, share, share, share. All right? And you could even make your own video inviting people. Why not? Young people, make your own videos inviting people. Yes, don't forget the Thanksgiving sign-up sheet. We need some food. We need food. If we're going to eat, we're going to have to have food. We're not having finger food. We're going to have a feast. So get, get with Charlotte. She'll put the list back on the back. And we need to make four, four canned goods to get in if you don't show up no and probably we'll let you pass if you don't bring the canned goods, but we do need them. Matter of fact, somebody reached out to us yesterday for food. And I just shot them straight over to Sierra, and I assume they've got that taken care of. Got this lady some food. Folks, this time of year, people are, matter of fact, we have a lady uh, in her own congregation here um, who, is, who is struggling financially and uh, doesn't have a job and not able to work. And so, folks, those things we need to, uh, and if charity begins, it begins first in the household of faith. That's what the Bible says, it begins in the household of faith. And so, but anyway, I think that's all the announcements that I know to think of. I'm sure I forgot something. But anyway, next Friday. All right, 
So we talked about becoming a believer. The first way to relieve stress is to become a child of God. Amen? But unfortunately, the people of God still deal with stress. Well, because one thing is we don't, we don't apply the Word of God to our life. It, it's, sad, it's a sad reality that most believers are still led by their feelings. They're still led by their car now. They have not had their minds renewed to the Word of God. They're either led by their feelings or led by dead religion, which is usually emotion-driven. Got to feel something. Got to feel it. That's why, you know, uh, the Chain Breaker song, as popular as it was, there was one line in that song I did not like. I believe it. I feel it. Well, it don't matter if you feel it or not. Your feelings will lie to you. His cha- he'll break your chains even if you don't feel it. Can you say amen? You believe by faith. Now thank God we can feel God. But I don't have to have a feeling to believe God's word. I believe it because it is his word. And he's not a God that can lie. Could, could, it, could it be possible that you and I could live Worry free. Could it be? Could we, could we achieve that? Let's turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, we'll start at verse number 25. Don't worry about anything. Now that's a tall order, I understand. But yet that is a command from God. Matthew 6, starting at verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, who's he talking to? You. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you should eat, or what you should drink, nor for your body, what you should put on. It is not, is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather. Into barns, yet your heavenly Father, who? Heavenly Father. Feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic unto his stature? And And why take you thought for Rhema? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, who's he talking to? You. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon and all his glory. Now, let's stop right there. Solomon, for some of you young in the Lord, may not know a lot about the Bible, Solomon was a king of Israel. Solomon's dad knew how to get get wealth and Solomon was so he was probably the richest man ever to live when actually a king uh, I mean the queen of Sheba a queen now come to visit him and she said the my breath my breath is taken from me because of what I see he probably walked around and were I mean you talking about being blinged out his robe was probably sewed together with gold thread. As a matter of fact, they had so much gold and silver, it was laid up in piles. Amen. I mean, he was fat rich and dressed to the hilt. She was even amazed at how well his servants were decked out, how happy they were. She was amazed when she seen the apes and all the animals that this man had. And when people came to see him, they even give him more. I mean, everybody come to see him gave him something. Now let's go back to what Jesus said, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall not he much more clothe you? O ye of little faith, 
Therefore take no thought. Take what? No thought. Saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or with all shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto Sufficient unto the day is the evil therefore. What's the, what's the insurance? You're in good hands? Well, you're in good hands when it comes to God. Can you say amen? Matter of fact, he said, no man can pluck you out of my hand. I mean, he's got a hold of you. I preached a message one time, get a grip. Because God's got a grip on you. We got to get a grip on our thought life. We got to get a grip on our worry because God's got a grip on us. And he is not letting go. You talking about a kung fu grip. God's got one on his people. And so we, 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 there's, we get all this worry and tension. And we got to learn to try to do one thing at a time. Do one thing. For you that were here last week, just briefly, set, set yourself a goal. Get, get a, get, spend time with God. Let God give you a vision. You set the vision, and you, and you plan out how you're going to get there. You stick to the plan. Amen? Don't try to deal with more than you can handle. Now, that's a tough one for me. I tend to pile a lot on myself. I'm a, I'm a doer by nature. And, but we, we have to learn, we have to learn to say no. We, my, my grandfather always used to ask me, if you got all the feathers that you can pack, can you pack one more? If you got all you can pack, you can't pack one more, even if it is a feather. When you got all the feathers you can pack, you can't pack one more. You have to know your limit. And when you know your limit and you go beyond your limit, stress begins to set up. Can you say amen? Now, people get preoccupied and they try to give more of themselves than they can. Another way not to worry is to enjoy what you do. In Colossians 3 and 23, it says, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as you're doing it to the Lord and not unto men. That's why every year I ask our, our, our leaders, our, especially our Sunday school teachers, because when it becomes a duty, it's time to step back. You must enjoy teaching the Word of God, or any ministry for that matter. When it becomes a chore or a duty or a burden, it's time to step back. It's time to reevaluate. Now, yes, that, make no mistake, any ministry will be burdensome at times because you physically get tired. Your flesh wants to do other things than to study, than to pray. But we're not talking about that side. When it's just a constant dread or a burden, it's time to step back. But, the way to flip that script is you're doing it unto God. Can you say amen? There's times I've been here. I, I, I think I told this story before. I, if I hadn't, I'm going to tell it. Used to, bro, Brother Yates, if you was a lay minister in this church, you had to clean the church. That was part of your responsibility. And no disrespect, ladies. But I've cleaned up some of the worst messes after ladies' meetings I've ever seen. It's the truth. And I was here one Sunday evening after a women's meeting on the Friday night. And I, I just I thought, how could anybody be so disrespectful? And I was cleaning up and I got so mad I threw the garbage crate across the kitchen. 
and I had to repent. I said, God, I ain't cleaning this church for Brother Yates. I ain't cleaning this church for the people that go here. I'm cleaning it for you. See, I had to, I had to realign. Amen. Straighten your halos up. See, I let, I let, I got overwhelmed. And I, I let what somebody else could have done, well, it wasn't their job per se. Amen. It was assigned to me to do it. Well, I wasn't doing it unto God. But it, it, whatever you're doing, you do it unto God, and I guarantee you'll find pleasure in it. You'll find joy in it. Amen. Now listen, I understand it ain't no joy to clean the bathroom. But if you do it unto God, you'll find joy in it. Amen. Whatever you do unto God, even your job that puts money in your pocket, the Bible says you do it as you're doing it unto Him. And I tell you this, when you're doing, if you're doing your job unto Him, you'll be on time. You'll do your best while you're there. Amen. You'll give 100%. You won't worry what somebody else is doing. And you won't worry about what someone else is doing because you're doing it unto God. And I know the Bible says that the employees, employer should treat their employees. Well, many times that don't happen. But that doesn't change the fact that we're to do it as we're doing unto God. Can you say amen? And that will, that will relieve stress from you. When you find, when you're doing whatever you're doing. Okay, let's go back to the, the holidays. Ladies, y'all cook and cook and cook. And people come in and they rip through the kitchen and eat. And about 15 minutes after 15 hours of work, it's all over. Now you got all this mess, you got all this food, no place to put it. It's stress, right? Somebody say amen to me. You know I'm telling you the truth. You do it unto God. Amen. It'll relieve your stress. Don't let your relatives put more on you. You can tell them, no, we're not having it at my house if you don't want it at your house. It's all right to say no. No, we're going to have it at your house. Another way to relieve stress is to be organized. People that are not organized are stressful people. You, you have to be organized. You have to have a routine. Amen? And, and you know, I, I've, I'm amazed at people. They, they can't never find nothing. They don't want nothing is. They're always looking. I, I don't want to name her because, bless her heart, I, I, every day they was looking for the car keys. Every single day. Now, my dad lost his false teeth one time. Looked for them for three hours. You know where they were? In his mouth. That's, that's the truth. That's the truth. But d people that are not organized are stressful people. Have a plan. Be, be repetitious. And some of your things. And you say, well, that, that don't, that's the words of God in that. Well, Jesus went to the temple as was his custom. The Bible is full of patterns, methods, patterns, routines. And, and you know, if, if you come in, I understand many times, especially if you got kids, young kids, grandkids, ladies, you can straighten up the house and, they can come through and it look like a cyclone hit it. Amen. But you got to help them learn to help pick up themselves. So, so make a list. We talked about goals. Make short goals and make long-term goals. Even in your home. You don't, try to, you don't have to try to do it all one time. Pick priorities. Meetings. People get stressed even about vacations. 
do one thing at a time. Get you a list of what's most important that has to be done in your life. What's most important that needs to be done. Then prioritize them. Set a date to when it's going to get done. Stick to the list. These are just practical tips to help you get, get, get stressed out of your life. So, once again, people that have to stand up in front of the people that bring stress. But many times, if, if, especially if you're public speaking, a lot of times stress is because you, you don't know your subject matter. A person, you know, I hear preachers say, well, I get nervous every time I get up to preach. Well, I don't know. I can't, I can't say that. I've heard them say, well, if you don't get nervous, something ain't right. Well, I don't, I, I'm not one of them. I guess there's something wrong. Amen? Why? Because I've, I've spent time. I'm confident in what God's given me. I'm confident in how I'm going, to, I'm going to get it out. I don't stress. Amen? Now, I've preached messages and thought, well, my God, that, was, that, that hit like a ton of bricks. And the devil tried to beat me up, and I just go, wait a minute. No. I did what God asked me to do. That's all I can do. That's the same thing with you. So, once again, you do it as you're doing it to God. Don't get stressed. When God's giving you a task to do, God will equip you. God's not going to let you fall flat of your face. Can you say amen? But if you do fall flat of your face, bless God, get up and go forward. Amen. Now, be prepared. Another thing that's helpful, and, and young people, let's, let's, let's go here, church, church time. Now, this is, this is just what I do. I don't decide what I'm going to wear to church Sunday morning. I have my clothes picked out, sometimes even as, as early as Friday, but I always have them laid out Saturday night. I don't get up and stress Saturday, Sunday morning what I'm going to wear to church. I do all that Saturday night. I have everything laid out that I'm going to need to go out the door. And if I forget it, I call Minerva. But anyway, and she brings it. But be prepared. You know, and I know some people struggle with this. Everybody's got, I mean, you might be, and I'm not, I'm not condemning you, but people that are late all the time, the, all those things can be corrected. That, that is a problem that can be corrected. It's, it's, and, and I tell you, especially because that's a bad habit to get into, being late. Because you'll find it spills over into other areas of your life, which causes stress. People that are late, whether they admit it or not, they're stressed because they're late. And usually they're late because they've stressed about something at home. Can you say amen? And so... When you come in late, then everybody's looking at you. That creates more stress. If you're always 10 minutes late, that's a simple fix of that. Leave 10 minutes earlier. I mean, how hard is that to figure out? Be prepared. I have, I like I say, my Sunday morning routine is the same every Sunday with the exception of something maybe if I'm going to go buy stuff for communion or something like that. Why? Because if, I, if you try to do something extra, it brings stress. When you bring stress in the house of God, it's, it's very noticeable. Especially when you're standing here at the advantage I'm looking at. When I'm looking at your mug, I can see the stress on your face. I can see when you've been fighting with your spouse. I can see when you've been fighting with your kids. I can see when you've been fighting with your spouse and your kids. Amen. I can see it on your faces when you're stressed. All right. So be prepared. And tension builds when you're hurried. When you get in a rush because you're late, it builds tension. Don't wait till Sunday morning to realize that you don't have gas in your vehicle, that you've got to stop and get gas unless you've allowed for time to get gas. Amen? All these things will make life so much easier. We talked about setting priorities. 
So there may be a time we need to ask ourselves if our tension is induced, our worries are really necessary. You remember the story of Mary and Martha? Jesus frequently went to their home for dinner. And Martha, she was stressed out. She was stressed out. She was trying to prepare this meal. A very notable thing, very honorable thing. But she looked at what Mary was doing and it stressed her out. Because Mary should be helping me. She got time to do that later. But maybe Mary heard what Jesus said in Matthew 6. Seek him first. Seek him first. Martha, Martha, Jesus said. Thou art careful and troubled about many things. Jesus saying it just ain't the supper's got you in a tizzy. Martha, there's many things you're troubled about. And now you've, you're releasing them. But one thing is needful. Mary, you're saying many things are needful and you're troubled about many things. But one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Jesus went to, on to tell Mary that this one necessary thing was not food. But it was fellowship with God. Fellowship with God. Nothing can replace that time that you set at the feet of Jesus. Can you say amen? Set priorities. And I know, mamas, it's hard. But you just got to etch out some time in your day. Just get alone with God. Amen? It's either getting up before the kids get up or sending them to bed early. Amen? But etch you out some time for God. All right? Get you a daily devotional. Matter of fact, I got a whole case of G uh, faith foods coming. I'll give you one if you promise me you'll use it. And I promise you if you use it, it'll mess you up in a good way. Brian's shaking his head. It's been messing him up. I'm telling you, it will change your life. Amen. Bless God. They're worth every penny I've ever, I've never, I've never gave one away that I regretted giving it. Now, if you got a faith food I give and you ain't using it, bring it back to me. I'll give it to somebody that will. Because they don't do nobody good, no good if you don't read them. Spend, etch you some time away. You and Heavenly Father. It could be your, it could be your commute on the way to work. But you can't do that and listen to Dwayne Forbes at the same time. Turn Dwayne off. Everybody likes Dwayne, but get, you got to get along with God. You already know what the weather is. You don't got to listen to the forecast. Most of you got it right here on your wrist. I can tell you the low is going to be 26 tonight. See how simple that was? I didn't have to listen. I, I'm, I, don't, I can spend some time with God. Amen? And then, you, then move on to your day. Or close out your night. But find that time. Set, a, set priorities. Now, and most of everybody in here has been on the mass walk that's an adult in here. One of the first talks you get, the first talk, is priority. Am I right? Is that right? Yeah. I know you get a priority talk. I think it's the first one. Why is that the first talk? Well, because that's the first thing you need to get straight is priorities. Can you say amen? And that first priority is spending time with God. It supersedes everything else. Everything is pushed aside. Now, God, or I'm sorry, the enemy will even let you think you're doing something in ministry which looks very good. And it may be good. It may be helping people. Just so you don't spend time with God. He can get you. The enemy will get you so busy that you don't spend time with him. Once again, Know your pressure. Know how much you can take. I couldn't put my, I can't give my backpack full of everything that's in it right now 
and put it on a three-year-old's back and expect him to pack it. I can't do it. Everybody's, everybody's level of burden or what they can do or, is based on them. Many times it is based on physical limitations. Burdens come to all of us, but you've got to find ways to ease that load. Amen? Delicate to others some responsibilities. One of the things that Brother Gillum, which most of y'all may not know who Brother Gillum is, but that's irrelevant. One of the things that Brother Gillum taught, and I don't know, I wasn't, I wasn't under him the whole time he was here, but all the time that I ever sat under him, his main message was that you are not the significant doer of all things. Learn to delegate. You, you don't have to try to do it all. Once again, that's a hard one for me. I'm guilty of this one. But I am learning. And I tell you, it feels pretty good. Just like I told you when that lady called about food, I shot her straight to Sierra. I was done with it. Amen? And it lets other people be involved in the ministry. But also in your home. You got to understand you cannot do it all. It's all right to delegate. Mamas, parents, it's okay to let your kids do something. It will not hurt them. Sorry, kids, but it's not going to hurt them to get up and do something. Sorry, Jake. It won't hurt them. It's good for them, right? I start over here. All kids, it's good to do things. Teach you responsibility, and it relieves stress off your parents. Amen? Yeah, but you're younger. Young people, your parents shouldn't have to tell you three times to pick up your toys. To pick up your room. What are you grinning about, Taryn? They shouldn't have to tell you three times to pick up your room and then threaten you. You do it. You take the responsibility and do it. You eliminate the stress off your parents. I'm going to tell you what, when your parents are stressed, let me help you young people. When, when your parents are stressed because you've not done what they ask, it creates more stress and they're going to come down harder on you and it's going to cause you stress. Amen. When if you simply did what you were asked the first time, you could, you could avoid a lot of trouble in your home. Say amen. Find ways to work off your frustration. Don't waste your time fussing and complaining. Do something constructive. Amen. Seek ways to use your talents, your gifts, your ministries. God, God, God ain't too thrilled about complaining. Matter of fact, I remember some people in the Bible that didn't get to go into the promised land because of their complaining. That's what kept them out. They walked around the mountain for 40 some years and it was because they're complaining they didn't get to go in. Matter of fact, it got so bad one time the earth opened up and swallowed a bunch of them because of their complaining and murmuring. And be careful about your complaining and murmuring. These same group of people... They was, they was complaining about eating manna every day. That's all they had was manna, 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 manna. I wish I had something else. I sure wish I had some quail to eat. God said, really? Okay. Well, a wind comes in, and here comes so many quail. Listen to this. They ate so many quail, the Bible says it was coming out of their noses. Now, I don't know how much you've got to eat of something before it starts coming out your nose. It has to be a bunch because I've ate a lot. I've, I've gorged myself a time or two, and it ain't come out my nose yet. Why? He showed them. I guarantee they didn't ask for quail again. They ate manna until they crossed. Before they crossed, right before they crossed, it dried up. Find ways to do something constructive. The best way to find something to do 
is to be involved in the ministry. Everybody can do something in the ministry. From the least to the greatest, from the youngest to the oldest, there is a place for you in ministry. Today, I told our young people, they have no excuse, no excuse not to minister the gospel. They have no excuse. Because as long as you don't flow and walk in the God-given gifts and talents, you will be stressed and you'll find other things to do which create burdens and stress. God never intended for our life to be a burden. Life, it should be a joy. I'm going to say that again. Life should be a joy. Life should never be a burden. Listen, what's, what's people say? Listen to this. You ever heard somebody down in the dumps, in the muddy grubs? Well, I just, I just feel like I'm a burden to everybody else. I'm just a burden to everybody. The Bible says we're to bear one another's burden. So if you're a burden, we'll bear you. Life, God meant for life to be enjoyable. God's people should be the most joyful people on planet earth. But we, we don't stand out from the crowd. We look just like the world. We're stressed. We're mad. We're frustrated. Just like the world. So then we need to evaluate our attitudes. Amen. When you're worried, tainted, that leads to depression, self-pity, self-centeredness, and bloom, despair, and agony me on me attitude gets our back into a corner. We fall under the depression of woe is me, nothing is working out. It, for me, my whole world is crashing in on me. What am I going to do now? And as we're right, wringing our hands and pacing the floor, we wait for the worst. And then when you wait for it, it usually comes. Because you, you've probably spoken it. Our attitude is an open invitation to the enemy of our souls to make havoc in our lives. Your attitude. Your attitude. The Bible said it's better to dwell in the corner of a rooftop than it is in wide open house with a contentious woman. Woman, your attitude matters. Man says don't, be, don't make friends with a brutish man, an ignorant man. Your attitude, attitude of laziness, always making excuses to why. Well, there's a line in the street. The, they talks about the, when he walks by the wall and the, and the vines and the weeds have took the wall because of their laziness. A little, little, rain, little sleep, a little slumber to sleep. Our attitudes create atmosphere. Man, when you walk in, or wife, when you walk in at the end of the day, mad, frustrated, after a heart, and listen, I understand it. If you're like that, when you get home, sit in the car till you get, till you get over it. Don't take that mess in the house. Somebody say amen to me. Don't take that mess in the house. If you got to drive around till you get over it, do whatever. Come to the church. We'll give you the code so you can get in and come and pray. Do something. But your attitude creates atmosphere. And your attitude, when it's bad, creates stress. How many ever people say, well, I've heard too many women say this. We just, we just, I grew up in a home where we had to, we just walked on eggshells. I grew up in one of them. You talking about stress. Your attitude creates stress. Unless you have the right attitude. And the right attitude for the believer is joy. Because our God is a God of joy. Well, how does that come? Why is joy so important? Well, in His presence, according to Psalm 16, 11, in His presence is the fullness of joy. 
When you don't have joy, it's because you've not been in his presence. Point, point blank. Thessalonians tells us to rejoice evermore. Jesus said, I've wrote these things unto you that your joy might be full. You and I can enjoy the good things of life. We don't got to be anxious and stressed. And when we do, when those moments of stress come, the Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 7 that we're to cast all our cares on Him for He cares for us. We well, think, well, there's nothing good in my life. Well, you might have some things going on. For whatever reason. What's that old song? Count my blessings one by one. Have you ever just stopped and think about how blessed you are? Even when you might be going through some things. And we all are. But bless God. Another thing that can cause stress is procrastination. Putting stuff off. When you got something that needs to get done, don't put it off to the last minute. Set up a goal and a plan to get it done. Sometimes you may need help. That's what the church is for. Where no counsel is, the people fail. But in the multitude of counselor, there is safety. You need to reach out to the brother, to the sister. Don't keep all this bundled up inside. Because we all, you know, we're all supposed to walk in here with our religious face on, right? We ain't nothing supposed to be bothering us, right? That's the problem. We hide it, and then we go home and explode. Amen. And then your kids see it, and they say to themselves, is this, is this is what being a Christian's like? And then you wonder why your kids grow up and wander off, walk away? Your attitude is very important. And if you need help, reach out. There are certain things you and I can't change. But there's one thing we can always change, and that's us. You can change your attitude if it's poor. I can't change what somebody else does, but I can change what I do. Can you say amen? You got to stand up for your convictions. Don't ever compromise to fit in. And then we pray about everything. Prayer is, is, is man's way to communicate with God. And it is an effective way to relieve tension. Building up your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost... You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's, that's all I'm going to say. Psalm, David said, Every Evening and morning and at noon I will pray. And cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. Cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. And then we're told in 1 Thessalonians to pray without ceasing. How can we go about our daily lives without praying? Many of you are. Let me ask you this. How's it going for you? How's it going for you when you don't spend time in prayer? Prayer is not where we're going to persuade God to do things our way, but it's opening ourselves up to allow Him to do what is best through us and for us. He knows the beginning from the end. We just need to get on board with Him to let Him guide our steps. 
And then we give thanks. You can be thankful in your heart, but few will know it. But when you give thanks, we're showing our thankfulness through our action. Everybody likes to be appreciated. Man likes to be appreciated. When he does something, he wants to be recognized. He wants to be affirmed. And there's nothing wrong with that. Now, I'm not talking about a prideful affirmation where, where you, you know, like the Pharisees did, sound a trumpet when they, when they prayed or when they give their tithes. I'm, but there's nothing wrong when you do something with people being grateful. When something, somebody does something for you, be thankful. And tell them you're thankful. Well, how much more should we give thanks unto Heavenly Father? Can you say amen? I mean, it was the last time you just thanked God. Just said, God, I don't, I'm not here for anything other than just to give you thanks. Amen? We're told in the Scripture, and everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God. This is the will of God to give thanks. It's God's will for you to thank Him. Can you say amen? You say you want to be in God's will? Well, start thanking Him because that's His will. And everything give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, people get, well, it's not God's will for you to have cancer. It's not God's will for your kids to be strung out. It's not God's will for you to get a divorce. My God. But in everything, we give thanks. That is God's will. Amen. You don't thank God because you got cancer. You don't thank God because you're getting a divorce. You don't thank God because your kids are hellions. But you thank God because he's God. Can you say amen? And he's worthy of our thanks. He's worthy of our praise. You're talking about attitudes changing atmosphere. You, you can tell. Listen, I go into a lot of people's homes. I go into a lot of people's homes. And if they had fish the night before, I know they had fish the night before. I can smell it. I can tell if they had bacon for breakfast. I can still smell it. But I can tell you if their husband and wife's into it too. Because there's an atmosphere. But you can tell a home where love is expressed and thanks is given. It leaves an atmosphere. It leaves an aroma, if you will. We can set an atmosphere in our home. We can set an atmosphere in our church. But when you come into church mad, sad, unjoyful, unthankful, it creates an atmosphere. Listen, I'm going to say this the nice way I can. I don't care if you don't like the song that's being sung. You can still stand up and give thanks. Amen. But when you but when you say, well, I don't like that song, and you sit back there with a look like you've been sucking on a lemon, it creates an atmosphere. Amen or oh me. Yeah, I've sung a lot of songs that I didn't particularly like, but bless God, I like God. And I love God, and I'm going to praise him even if I don't like the song. Amen. As long as it's biblically sound, I'll I'll belt it out. Amen. May not be my favorite, but bless God. I'm going to praise God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Give thanks even when your heart's breaking. Give thanks when your health ain't what, it sh what you want it to be. Give thanks when your bank account is struggling. Just keep giving thanks. So what's that mean? Are we to thank God when all these dismal circumstances? Or are we to thank God for something else? We just thank Him because of who He is. We thank Him for the promises that He has given us. God doesn't want His children to suffer any more than you want your children to suffer. But David said, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. He said, I'll enter his gates with thanksgiving. 
you ought to be thinking God coming across this parking lot. I will enter his courts with praise. I mean, it, it ought not take a seven-piece instrumental and high professional singers to get somebody motivated to praise God. Can you say amen? We shouldn't have to have a light show to get somebody motivated to praise God. My God, you ought to be motivated because you're alive. You ought to be motivated. David said, I can't praise him from the grave. My God, that's enough to praise him because you're still alive. Amen. Thank God that you didn't walk in here naked. Thank God you didn't walk out of here with chains on. Thank God you're not down in the hospital. But bless God if you're in the hospital. Praise God that you're there. Thank God that you got medical help. Come on now. God is worthy to be praised and worthy to give thanks unto. Well, we're in the Thanksgiving season, are we not? But we should be thanks living. Every moment of our life, we should be grateful to God and to be grateful to one another. I'm thankful for everything that somebody ever does for me. And listen, let me tell you, let me help you a little bit here because this was, this was a hard lesson for me to learn. I used to not, because we're trained, we're trained. See, a lot of times you've got to get your mind retrained. There were people would try to give me something. Oh, no, you don't have to do that. No, you don't, don't do that. I did that, and one day I did that, and I left. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't accept what, what they were trying to give me. And God rebuked me. He said, why are you trying to hinder me blessing those folks. I said, God, I'll take anything somebody offers me. I don't care what it is. If it's a stick of chewing gum or if it's a $100 bill, I'll take them. And I'm going to be equally grateful either way because you give into my bosom. As, as you give, men will give into your bosom. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. Be thankful. Amen. Let's stand. And if you be thankful, I promise you, it'll relieve your stress. Be thankful. <clears throat>